Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. We made it. It is NFL kickoff week. I know some of y'all still got some drafts that you got to conclude. But what are we talking today? Watch list players, potential must add players that we got to do going into week one. I understand you draft your team, you like your team right off the bat. So it's not necessarily a waiver wire show, but it is a must add players on your watch list because they could pay div uh, dividends extremely early. Let's talk these running backs. First on the board, Ty Chandler, only 34% ownership rate here for the running backs. We know Aaron Jones is the lead back in Minnesota. They lost JJ McCarthy and it's going to be Sam Darnold. They're still going to run the football a lot and we know the injury history of an Aaron Jones. You got to handcuff Aaron Jones if you have him. Ty Chandler is a must to be on your bench as a handcuff. If not, if you're looking for some depth at the running back spot, Ty Chandler is definitely one of these guys who's going to have a decent role in this offense, even with an Aaron Jones. You got to even think 55, 45% on the splits in the run game is absolutely here. Ty Chandler needs to be on that watch list, if not owned at this point immediately. J.K. Dobbins. 46% ownership rate right now. How is this LA Chargers offense going to move? I understand everybody's fading basically all Charger players at this point outside of somebody like a lad McConkie, but I get it. They got to run the football as well. Is it going to be Gus Edwards? Is it going to be J.K. Dobbins? Is it going to be Vidal, that rookie? We will see. They also got themselves a Hassan Haskins. We know Harbaugh is definitely, you know, very familiar with his former uh, Michigan Wolverine running back in Hassan Haskins. But J.K. Dobbins has the opportunity to, you know, rejuvenate his career here in Los Angeles with these Chargers. He definitely needs to be owned at this point, in my opinion, if you got room. If not, put him on your watch list, no question. Khalil Herbert, Chicago Bears, we know it's DeAndre Swift's backfield right now but they will mix and match the running upside in this backfield. Could be a three-headed monster which does you know promote some headaches when it comes to who to start week in week out. I completely understand but Khalil Herbert is one of these running backs barring any health. He is a very good quality running back and will make a good one-two punch with a DeAndre Swift. Only 33% ownership right now. Definitely put him on the watch list if not on your roster right now. Now these watch list players with a Bucky Irving rookie Tampa Bay Buccaneers we know Rashad White's likely the lead back again this year but they will they want to at least alleviate some touches and the, you know give him a break and a breather from time to time Bucky Irving does have a very similar like skill set where he can catch the football he can run the football extremely well he's on the smaller end of it so he could not see a lot of gadget plays PPR upside for a Bucky Irving no question Ray Davis Buffalo Bills who's going to take the secondary role for these Bills behind a James Cook in the backfield it's got to be Ray Davis, right? So you got to think the Bills in a transitional period when it comes to how is this offense going to move? Who's going to see a lot of the target share and how will they run the football? Under Joe Brady, they ran the football a lot last year and I foresee that continuing this year. Ray Davis definitely on the watch list. Tyler Algier, 35% ownership rate and I'm not buying, you know, the stance the Atlanta Falcons brain trust was saying that, you know, Algier is going to have a substantial role in this offense. Yes, he's still going to have a role, but it's Bijan season. If they do not feed Bijan, John Robinson to a high level degree they have failed as a coaching staff but Tyler Algier definitely needs to be on your radar if, if Bijan does go down with some injury or some ailment you know that Algier is uh, more than capable of taking the lead role in that Falcons offense Carson Steele rookie for these Kansas City Chiefs definitely on the watch list now that Clyde Edwards Hilaire is out for at least four games he is uh, on a uh, it's not a pup but he's on like a leave of absence type of situation now they need a secondary running back Isaiah Pacheco is the lead back in Kansas City like you all know but Carson Steele definitely somebody you got to keep tabs on as he doesn't look terrible out there on the field but we could see you know maybe some sprinkles from here and there I still think the Chiefs are going to be very much pass happy Vidal like I said another rookie running back these rookies are definitely filling in this roster for these Chargers they're going to try to at least you know we'll see I think they're going to try to figure out who's going to be the lead back Gus Edwards will likely get the first cr uh, kick at the can but will he, can he be, I mean, outside of Baltimore's offense, be a lead back in this league? I got my question marks. That's why I'm leaning a little bit to more, little bit more toward a J.K. Dobbins. But again, injury history to a J.K. Dobbins. Vidal is a good running back, can do both in the pass game and in the run game. So definitely one to watch. And just for she and giggles, S and giggles, Dalvin Cook, man, I almost swore there. But Dalvin Cook with those Dallas Cowboys, 13% owner, ownership rate right now, got put on the practice squad. We'll see, man. Dallas needs a run game in a very big way. What is Dalvin? 29 years of age. 
basically hanging on to the strings of his NFL career, and the Cowboys gave him one more opportunity. And I mean, if you got room in deeper leagues, absolutely keep him if or put him on your roster. If not, he is definitely on the watch list just in case. But, I mean, he might be some fab dollars if he does get on and crack that roster and start running the football. We'll see about Dalvin Cook. Quarterbacks, man, Deshaun Watson. I understand everybody's fading these Cleveland Brownies right now. And it's interesting because the offense isn't terrible. Deshaun Watson did showcase the fact that he can play uh, high-end football. And they've added some more weapons to this offense with Jerry Judy. You know, Nick Chubb still dealing with that injury. But Jerome Ford showcased the fact that he can run the football extremely well. 34% for Deshaun Watson seems a little low for me so if you're in super flex leagues especially he's definitely one you got to look to he's probably on somebody's roster anyway in super flex but in single flex league or single quarterback leagues excuse me I think that you know you got to put him on the watch list especially if you waited to draft your quarterback there is opportunity that Watson could be a high earner for you in this offense this season Baker Mayfield big show after the season he did produce last year 43% ownership rate only there still is trust issues, and I understand. I'm with you as well. You would rather get the top-end quarterbacks over a Baker Mayfield. He will be a great matchup by week filler, highly likely this season. But the way that they played football last year and moved the ball in this offense, Baker should have another repeat season that he did have last season. Geno Smith in this offense in Seattle. Could this be the final year for Geno? We'll see a different changeover at the coaching staff. No more Pete Carroll. We'll see how they do operate in Seattle. Could be, you know, a mix and match. Again, they got three talented wide receivers and a DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, a jig ball, Tyler Lockett, and they're still going to run the football a lot with a Kenneth Walker, the third, and potentially Zach Charbonnet. Charbonnet, he will have a uh, extended role this year as well. But Geno Smith... In matchup play, absolutely does have a good heaping of points. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, grace my list of watch players. Okay, Russell Wilson, I'm not necessarily in on this year. I think that they gave him the job due to respect, veteran respect. I think Justin Fields is the one quarterback that they do want to succeed because he could be an easy answer to the franchise passer in the future. But I think this is a good opportunity for Justin Fields to sit back, learn a little bit in-game stuff from a Russell Wilson, who is a seasoned vet, but he's on the back nine of his career. Sooner rather than later, I do believe that a Justin Fields will take over the reins in Pittsburgh, so they're both on my watch list at this point if you're in dire need of a quarterback. Drake May, final one on my quarterbacks, is the rookie. He is sitting. He is waiting. It didn't, you know, promote anything positive for these New England Patriots to start this rookie this season. Not as many weapons. Piss poor on offensive line defense is going to struggle why would you submit your rookie passer to that to break his confidence I understand the move but Drake may definitely showcase the fact he can throw the football in preseason yes it is preseason but he definitely is one of these guys we got to keep tabs on as the season does move forward wide receivers Dontavian Wicks 29% ownership rate. Yes, it is low, and he's got so much upside, but the 29% is definitely warranted because there's so many mouths to feed here in Green Bay. Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, we got Christian Watson, if he stays healthy. So that's the biggest thing, man. If Watson goes down again with an injury, or say if a Reed goes down for any uh, stretch of time, Dontavian Wicks is going to insert himself instantly into this offense once again as he showcased he can be a relied upon trusted source, and he's got the backing from his quarterback, Jordan Love Wicks definitely needs to be on your roster today I would want to say on your bench at least as that bench stash if not I get you put him on the wait list but he will not be there for long if an injury does go down Jerry Judy 43% ownership rate everybody fading Judy and I completely understand I am too but I do like the potential in this offense with an Amari Cooper that could be a nice one-two punch and then adding somebody like David Njoku this could be a decent offense moving the football through the air Jerry Judy definitely could have a big rebound but I mean I get it he dropped passes injuries his career just didn't go the way we had anticipated in Denver maybe a change of scenery will do him that much better here in Cleveland Jerry Judy definitely a high-end watch list player Adam Thielen okay he's on the back nine of his career and I'm not necessarily in unless you absolutely require PPR upside and a flex opportunity I mean, he's probably got the best chemistry on this offense with a Bryce Young, and Bryce did look good in the offseason. We'll see if it can translate into in-season contest, but I mean, PPR upside for an Adam Thielen should be there, but I understand the notion that, you know, Deontay Johnson is going to take a lot of the pass work away from an Adam Thielen, so they want to do that transitional period. There could be the first six weeks where we still see Adam Thielen relevant, and then it could drop off, so he might be a short-lived watch player if you require another PPR wide receiver. Gabe Davis, 31% ownership ship 
or 37% ownership. That is interesting to me because, yes, okay, he is a definite boomer bust category right now. We see guys like Brian Thomas, the rookie. He's in like the 80 percentile of ownership right now. So everyone's banking on the fact that rookie Brian Thomas is going to outplay early on and often and not allow Gabe Davis to see the field. I think they brought in Gabe Davis to give a different, you know, dynamic to this offense. You still got Christian Kirk. You got Evan Ingram, but you required some supportive pieces. And we've seen what Gabe can do. He's an 800 plus yard with a wide receiver eight touchdowns in this league yes his hands did foil him fail him as he did uh, go down the season with the bills last year so we'll see it definitely is a boomer bust but he could be an absolute gem waiver wire pickup as we move down Andre Yosevash from the Cincinnati Bengals we had all the drama surrounding a Jamar Chase Okay, he hasn't done much this offseason. They're saying he's going to play. They're very close to a contract extension, apparently. We'll see how that does shake down. But Andre Yosef, Yosef, Yosefash is one of my favorite players when it comes to potential sleeper appeal. This guy could take the Tyler Boyd role and run with it in a very big way. And the way that, you know, Joe Burrow could potentially be spreading the football around. We know T. Higgins on that contract. If they do re-up a Jamar Chase, I don't foresee T. Higgins coming back to Cincinnati. So he could be moving on. Andre Yosef could be one of these dudes that is going to be a big time point getter definitely get him on your watch list and then it potentially if Jamar Chase if something crazy happens where Chase does not play week one Yosevash could have a very big role in week one Quentin Johnston okay I you guys know if you watch my videos you watch his scouting report I did when he came out as a rookie I was not sold. He's got athletic ability for days. He's got lots of speed. He's got lots of ability. His hands have been the problem. They continue to be the problem, but somebody's got to catch passes from a Justin Herbert. So 8% ownership rate is definitely ind uh, indicative of why people are not, you know, uh, uh, you know, happy and, uh, you know, thinking that he could be somebody special this year. I'm with you as well. So keep him on the waiver wire at this point. Definitely just put that star beside his name as a potential watch list player. Noah Brown, Washington Commanders now, the commies. Houston has too many weapons, so they allowed Noah Brown to find uh, different pastures. And okay, you know, letting Jahan Dotson go from Washington to Philadelphia in that trade this offseason. Noah Brown has an opportunity to play beside a scary Terry McLaurin and Diami Brown to give them a leg up. Noah Brown, it, he showcased a fact with a good quarterback play with C.J. Stroud last year that he could be trusted and relied upon. I don't hate the watch list. Will not own him right now, but definitely put him on the watch list. He could be a very big gem moving forward. Jalen Tolbert, Dallas Cowboys. Just like Jamar Chase, the all the offseason issues with a contract with a CD Lamb. Now Jalen Tolbert, we know, taking over the role from a Michael Gallup. And I've always been a Jalen uh, Tolbert supporter. I think he's got a lot of ability. Was a little bit raw. Needed to refine some of his, uh, you know, traits and characteristics in his game. He's got great opportunity right now. Brandon Cook's dealing with another injury. If he goes down, you know he's going to be the secondary wide receiver here in this offense in Dallas. And they will have to pass the football a lot here in Dallas once again. So Dak Prescott without a big running game I don't think they're going to run the football very well in Dallas this year Jalen Tolbert is definitely one that is being massively slept on right now and could produce overproduce where he sits right now Jahan Dotson I get it 18% ownership rate getting traded to these Eagles with Saquon with AJ Brown grown-ass man you know Smitty we got you know Goddard you got so many weapons on this offense and they still will be very much run heavy they are saying that Jahan should be a uh, you know have a sizable role in this offense especially early on I could definitely see it these Eagles have been dying for that third secondary wide receiver in this offense to alleviate pressure and make some plays somebody with sure hands somebody with some speed and somebody with some route run ability Deshaun uh, uh, Jahan Dodson excuse me is definitely one of these guys so he is not only a bench stash player for me today definitely add him on the watch list Xavier Leggett rookie we'll see I upside is massive for this man Debo type of wide receiver very much put together like a running back good hands he can get up for that football and he can bulldoze over with some speed as well I do like Xavier Leggett but it's all determined on the fact of what is Bryce Young gonna be this year so Leggett on my watch list at this point Darnell Moody been preaching him up all offseason long. 
I don't know, man. 17% just seems low for me, especially with Kirk Cousins. I'm all in on the Darnell Mooney train. They got to pass the football. He is the secondary wide receiver. He will see better target share, and he will see lesser coverage. So, I mean, with a Drake London, with a Kyle Pitts and a Bijan, being your 1-2-3, even in the past game, you're going to see some contests for a Darnell Mooney that you're going to be like, damn, how did he slip out of these drafts? Get Darnell Mooney on your bench right now, at least for the first two weeks, and then we'll see if we get cut bait, if his role does not, you know, increase as we move forward. Demarcus Robinson from these Los Angeles Rams. Okay, he's definitely one of these guys. He's going to be a waiver wire gem once again. Puka dealing with an injury this offseason. He's good to go. Cooper Cup has been dealing with injuries. So if one of these dudes go down, we we know that they're going to rely on Robinson once again in this offense to move the football. Uh, had great chemistry with a Matthew Stafford. I do like him a lot as a waiver wire gem. So definitely put him on that watch list. Andy Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell from these Indianapolis Colts with Josh, uh, Josh Downs. Dealing with an injury, he may suit up this week as well. I do like the ability of Mitchell. The only issue I got, his his ownership rate would have been way higher had he been playing with somebody like a Josh Allen or something like that. But, I mean, we're still waiting for, you know, uh, Anthony Richardson to showcase the fact that he can be this quarterback that can, uh, you know, spread the football around to all of his wide receivers. We saw the struggles with the misreads, the interceptions this preseason, but A.D. Mitchell definitely is one of these guys. Could be a massive high riser as we get to, like, week six, seven, and eight. He's definitely one you got to put on your list, man. Jalen McMillan, 5% ownership. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, <clears throat> again, looking for that third wide receiver similarly to those, uh, you know, Philadelphia Eagles with uh, Jahan Dotson, McMillan is one of these guys, one of my favorite players coming out of this draft. I just love his game. I think that he could be such a fantastic dynamo in the slot in the NFL. We'll see how the Bucks use him, but he's definitely one you got to put on your list. A.T. Perry, someone's got to catch the secondary passes in New Orleans. I understand it. It is Rashid Shaheed with the wheels. He will have his contest as well, but you need that Michael Thomas type of wide receiver. Make the catches, you know, get the third down conversions, get some red zone opportunity. A.T. Perry is definitely one of these guys for me. He could be a big time getter this year as well. And then finish off with Jalen Polk. Just on the watch list, not really running to it right now because of Jacoby Brissett. We'll see how it does shake down with a Drake May, but those New England Patriots could have put up a lot of garbage time productivity, so definitely watch out for that. Finishing it off with tight ends, Cole Komet. Yes, I understand he's well over the 50% threshold. He's at 62%, but... If you're looking for a tight end, Komet's still there. I think it's a very good get because Caleb Williams is going to have to look for that safety blanket. Yes, they got wide receivers for days. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen could be those safety blanket type of wide receivers as well. But Cole Komet's a, you know, red zone opportunity, potential on the play action pass is definitely here. I do like him a lot this year. Excuse me, with a Caleb Williams. Jonu Smith in the Miami Dolphins. Very much an interesting tight end prospect or uh, uh, player this year. Because he goes to these Miami Dolphins, to attack of Aloha, we understand he could at least move the football a lot to this wide receiver room. And they're looking for somebody to take the pressure off of an Odell Beckham and a Jalen Waddle. Waddle time, we know that Waddle's dealing with an injury. Tyreek's dealing with a thumb. We know Odell Beckham is uh, out for four games on the pop. So Janu's role could be very big these first four weeks. There is no question. Looking for high upside tight ends in an offense that can move the football. Janu Smith, absolutely freaking lootly, man. Sign me up. Benson at rookie tight end. Okay, outside of the top dogs at rookie tight ends, I do love me some Benson, especially in this offense with the commies. Yes, he's got Zach Ertz to deal with, so we'll see. Keep him on the watch list. Do not pick him up at this point. It is, a, you know, just to see how his role could potentially be. Will Zach Ertz be that tight end of old that we know, or is he kind of on the back nine of his career as well, dealing with injuries, severe injuries as well? So I do believe that Benson at some point will overtake a Zach Ertz, but that's just speculation as we sit today. Kate Otten, okay. Okay, with all the wide receivers, it's going to be a tug of war basically between a McMillan, Palmer, and a Kate Otten. Otten will have his games from time to time, but you're likely in that 25% boom rate type of range for him. So it's definitely match of play only for a Kate Otten. Parkinson, Los Angeles Rams. We know Tyler Higby's out for four games on that pup list. Parkinson is one of these guys that's a very intriguing tight end that we should all be looking to. I get it. Starting him week one is going to be very tricky. And if you got the Kahuna, 
want us to do it, I definitely applaud you. He could be one of these guys that is so slept on because Higby's out, because Matthew Stafford still does use that tight end, even though he does got Cooper Cup and a Puka Nakua. I do think Parkinson and this tight end uh, option is not going anywhere. Yes, it's going to be slim some days. He is a very good uh, tight end that could fit in extremely well. And Mike Gusecki finishing off the list with the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, it's been a very long time since they've had a quality tight end. And I think this one, you know, is interesting. Am I, you know, excited? No, but it's interesting. He could could definitely fill the void if you are struggling at the tight end spot without question. But there you have it. That is must uh, watch add players because I, I get it. You know, your rosters are developed right now from your draft, but we got to understand who's on the waiver wire to potentially not overspend our fab dollars as we get closer to the season. I will have starts it for y'all as we get closer with this week. We are back, baby. Football week one, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, Monday. You got to love it. It is coming together. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. I am out.